The rod and reel setup is, is really key in artificial bait fishing for redfish. Um, you have to make long casts and casting is the key. And I use Riley rods uh, made by Captain Mike Peterson out of Wilmington, North Carolina. They have the best action of any rod I've ever used. They're really light. They're lighter than any rod I've ever used and very sensitive. And some of the baits, like I said, that we were going to use today is Gold Spoon, which is um, one of my favorite lures of all time. If I could have one, if I could just have one lure in my box, it would be a Gold Spoon because it's so versatile. You can work it on top, you can work it, jig it off the bottom, you can just slow roll it kind of like a spinner bait. You can't work it wrong. And every different location is going to be different. Shallow water, you're going to probably rip it a little bit. Um, faster through the water and a little bit if you're fishing three foot or more you're probably going to slow it down and kind of jig it and uh, stop it and, and uh, start cranking it. Focus is going to be on um, top water um, lures and what I like to use are, are small skitter walks, it's the freshwater model and I change all the hardware out on these uh, lures because they're made for freshwater fish, bass and actually the color I like to use the most is this frog color pattern. You have to change these split rings out to 50 pound split, split rings and the hooks need to be four times strength hooks. And what I like to do on the rear hook is to put a sure set uh, number four, four times strength hook on the back. And it gives it a little bit more weight and um, this bait has a great action in the water. It kind of, the back of it sits down in the water so the redfish can suck it up because redfish are mainly bottom feeders, they like crustaceans, uh, crabs, uh, shrimp, um, when they're tailing, they're tailing on crabs. When they do miss the top water bait, you'll notice today when I'm fishing, um, I, I'm not going to jerk the bait. You, you want to feel that fish before you tighten up on the fish so you don't pull that bait away from the strike zone. If you jerk this bait out of, out of the strike zone once the fish misses, he's probably not going to hit it again. If you just stop the bait or you know, keep working. I wouldn't say stop it if they miss it the first time. Just keep working the bait. I know it's hard. And what I like to do is focus on these points of these little islands and stuff and these marsh areas because that's where the redfish are going to be hanging to ambush this bait. There he is. That's a good one. Look at that take, man. That's what I like to see right there. A lot better fish here. Look at the bend in this Loki rod. Ah, oh, just pull. Tell you what, that was a good fish right there. He was feeding on the bait. I saw that fish pushing on the bank, eating. Threw that plug over there. He missed it three times. Okay. He swallowed that plug. That one ain't coming off. That sure sets down his throat. Look at that. That little fish tried to swallow that bait. Come on. Got it. Sometimes a better fish just suck it down like that. That wasn't a big explosion. And this is a better fish than that last one. Drumming, drumming. Get it ready, perfect. Look at that thing. There he is. Oh yeah. Look at that. Fish is so shallow you can see the bat come out of the water when you hit it. Another pretty fish. You see this eel grass on the bottom here where we're fishing, and they love this grass. It's a good ambush area kind of like the flats in Florida. Um, we're lucky between Riceville Beach and Topsville there's a lot of these these grass flats and the redfish love them. If you hold the fish upside down it'll actually uh, it'll put them to sleep. I mean they won't move on you. Uh, just hold them upside down if you can't get the bugger grip in there. That way you don't cut your hands all up on these these hooks. So he's just kind of sleeping there. He's kind of relaxes them.